I hate everyone in the White House. Now, that is not me talking. I'm quoting. I'm quoting someone, and I'm sure I could be quoting millions of anonymous Americans who say that every day. There are surely many Americans who've said that about every White House. But according to the record high disapproval of President Trump and the Trump White House, it may be that more people have said that about the Trump White House than any previous White House. What is historic about this new quote, I hate everyone in the White House, is that this is the very first time in history that the person quoted saying that is the president of the United States who lives in the White House. In a new report in Vanity Fair, Gabriel Sherman, who will join us in just a moment, as Rachel just told you, reports that several people close to the president say, quote, that Trump is unstable, losing a step, and unraveling. The article has two sources quoting the president as saying, I hate everyone in the White House. There are few exceptions, are few exceptions, but I hate them. Gabe Sherman reports, according to two sources, with knowledge of the conversation, former chief strategist Steve Bannon told Trump that the risk to his presidency wasn't impeachment, but the 25th Amendment, the provision by which a majority of the cabinet can vote to remove the president. When Bannon mentioned the 25th Amendment, Trump said, what's that? Joining us now, Gabe Sherman, special correspondent for Vanity Fair and MSNBC contributor, David Frum, senior editor for The Atlantic, Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com and an MSNBC contributor also with us, David K. Johnston, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who founded the DC Report. Dot org, a nonprofit news organization that covers the Trump administration. And, and Gabe, I first, I think this might have been the first program where the 25th Amendment was discussed this year. And it seems when I look at it's hard to pinpoint exactly yeah. in your article when the president had that conversation with Bannon, but it feels to me like maybe he missed that night of watching this show yeah. when he explained it very early in his presidency. He was too busy clearly watching Fox News. <laughs> yes. But but you know, Lawrence, I think we are, as I point out in the piece, at an inflection point. I think what the sources I spoke to very close to the president told me is that they are concerned about his stability and fitness for office. I think Bob Corker's interview with the New York Times in which he called uh, the White House, quote, an adult daycare and, uh, and worried that the president was putting us on a path to World War III gave sources around the president uh, comfort uh, to come forward and talk about what people at the highest uh, levels of the Republican Party are talking about in private, which is that this president is erratic. Uh, he's lashing out. His moods are dark. Uh, he stays up late at night calling people. People who have spoken to him on the phone say he repeats himself over and over again. He rambles in conversations. And this, uh, this is a situation where General Kelly and those in charge of our national security are doing the best that they can to manage the president of the United States. And I think that is a historic problem that in, in my political lifetime, and I imagine yours, uh, we have not seen before. There is an extraordinary passage in your article, which I want to read word for word because nothing like it has ever been written before. It says, one former official even speculated that Kelly and Secretary of Defense James Mattis have discussed what they would do in the event Trump ordered a nuclear first strike would they tackle him? Yes, and you know, that is a, a shocking uh, statement. And the context was th for that uh, quote was I was interviewing a, a former Trump official, and I said, you know, what is keeping uh, General Kelly uh, in the job. I mean, everyone around the White House knows that Donald Trump and, and John Kelly are not getting along. It's a very contentious relationship. And the source, among others, echoed <coughs> that he's staying in the job because he is there for national security. And they speculated that because of the pre president's mood swings and his tension, uh, penchant to latch out, that General Kelly is, has speculated, talk about what would they do if the president actually did act on these, these outbursts. And you know, you really have to ask yourself, you physically may need to restrain this man. And now that seems shocking, but at some level, you need to actually boil down what would go down if the president did order a first strike. Everything in your reporting for Vanity Fair, which everyone really must read, confirms what Senator Bob Corker has said about this chaos in the White House and the adult daycare situation there. Uh, David Fry from another uh, extraordinary passage here in this article, is, in Gabe's article, is when Bannon tells Trump about what he thinks is likely to happen in his first term. According to a source, Bannon has told people he thinks Trump has only a 30% chance of making it through his full term. Uh, David, so that's what someone who's been inside the White House with the president thinks 
uh, of his possible uh, completion of a first term. Well, Bannon also um, enjoys the prospect of chaos, of course. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but Bannon is at the same time, making all of these conditions more likely to befall the president. I mean, he is out there running uh, or proposing to run primary challenges to Republican senators that increase the odds that the Republicans are going to lose the Senate. One of the things that is really strange about President Trump is he doesn't seem to understand that for better or worse, and you may deplore this, you may welcome it, that the Republicans in Congress are his only shield. Um, and yet, they are the people with whom he is most at war. Uh, there's a, a quote tonight in the LA Times that I want to read uh, very carefully that, that supports uh, what Gabe is reporting. Uh, and it says, every time it says MSNBC or CNN, which you know he watches, this is, it, it, if, whenever it says on these networks, this is the adult, thank God they stopped him, it all gets to him. Uh, and Jason Johnson, that, that's talking about uh, the, when the president's watching uh, these networks, including MSNBC, and we are doing stories about these adults uh, in the White House who are, who are saving us from the chaos that Trump would visit upon us, uh, that that really gets to him. That really drives him crazy, apparently. Yeah, and it doesn't surprise me. And Lawrence, what this, what this brings to mind for me is what President Obama was saying all throughout campaign 26, and I know that's the past, but his biggest argument against Trump was this man lacks the temperament and the, the sort of the mental capacity to do this job. We don't just support our president. We don't just vote for presidents because they're smart guys and they've captured the zeitgeist of the country. We need men and maybe one day women who are mentally and emotionally capable of taking criticism, of learning on the job, and being capable of staying focused on the security of this nation above and beyond their petty fights. And this has gone beyond palace intrigue to a point where Donald Trump is not only an international security risk, he is a domestic security risk, and he might be a governmental mental security risk. And that's something that everybody should be concerned about, especially after reading this piece. David K. Johnston, uh, there's a line in Gabe's piece, which at this point is just kind of a throwaway line, uh, where the White House uh, responded to the article today, uh, issued a statement saying, the president's mood is good. Uh, but we now have a White House press office uh, who must issue statements about the president's mood, uh, and that is a new category of statement to be issued by the White House. We've never seen that before. Well, this is a White House that, you know, lives in a fantasy world, and what a terrible job to have to go out to the public and try to defend here the things that are coming out about Donald. There's, there's an issue, Lawrence, that Gabe's piece brings to the fore that's really important. A large number of Americans, principally Republicans, believe that Donald Trump is under siege, that he is their economic savior, and they've got to somehow have their eyes opened up to the fact that we have a man in the White House who's mentally unstable, he's totally unqualified, he's a con artist who's in a position where he's got to deliver the goods and he has no goods to deliver. And if we don't successfully get a large number of Republicans to pay attention to what you're hearing from people like a Corker, uh, we're going to have real trouble with Donald Trump leaving the White House by the 25th Amendment, by impeachment, by anything else, even by election results in 2020. I want to go to the LA Times reporting tonight, too, because, Gabe, this, as I say, is a supplement to what you've been reporting. It says, allies see signs that Trump is frustrated with Kelly yes. and increasingly unwilling to be managed even just a little. The person close to the White House said that the two men had engaged in shouting matches in recent days. Yeah, I mean, that clear, clearly dovetails with everything that I'm hearing, and I reported earlier this week that... Uh, General Kelly has a plan for when Trump returns to Mar-a-Lago uh, later this month that he wants to keep him out of the dining room, which uh, people who know I've been to Mar-a-Lago, it's very difficult. I mean, Trump, that's his house. I mean, he believes he can go everywhere in the house. And Kelly does not want Trump to be mingling and getting unsolicited policy advice from guests and members. Now, this is emblematic of Kelly trying to manage a president who fundamentally does not want to be managed. And uh, David, we have reports tonight that uh, that Sean Hannity has sometimes more influence uh, than John Kelly over the president, especially on the matter of immigration. Uh, and after there was a deal struck uh, with uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, Sean Hannity apparently talked the president out of that deal. Well, at the same time, the president seems to think that this, uh, that if he can do a deal, or the people around the president and his own family, who think if he can do a deal with uh, 
um, the Democrats that will somehow shut down the Mueller investigation. And that's that's one of the reasons they're so interested in it. And that, that won't happen either. So it's possible that he may be getting better advice from Sean Hannity than from uh, than from some of his intimates. And uh, David Kay, you, you've studied uh, Donald Trump longer than any of us. You've uh, you've dealt with him directly, uh, written books uh, about him. Uh, l give us your sense of temperamentally, emotionally, given everything that's been reported, where you think Donald Trump is tonight in the White House? Well, he's had this nice uh, meeting tonight in Harrisburg where Sean, Con where Sean Hannity was throwing him softballs. There was some booing as I listened to that broadcast or a portion of it. Uh, but it, Donald is going to be increasingly frustrated by the fact that he's not, he knows that he is not getting the kind of adoration that he totally and completely depends on to fill this empty vessel inside of himself. And he's trying to figure out some way to do it. And this concern that's been coming out about him and nuclear weapons, which he said during the campaign he was going to use nuclear weapons, goes to that. It shows you the leaks that came from the Pentagon tell you that there is deep concern that, as Gabe reports in this really good piece in Vanity Fair, uh, Donald may do something preemptive. And of course, he has tonight, he said that it's his attitude that matters. Well, no, under the Constitution, it's Congress that declares war. But we should be very, very worried about his deteriorating emotional state. Uh, it's not good and safe for anyone in the world so long as Donald Trump has access to the football. And uh, Jason Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, it may be hard for people to remember, but when General John Kelly was coming into the White House, one of the things that was going to happen is that the leaking was going right. to stop. And the only thing that's happened to the leaking is it's gotten better and better and better. And we have even better, stronger leaked reporting by Gabe Sherman and others. Oh yeah, this is this has gone from ketchup bottle to a geyser. Like it's just it's leaking all the time, and and it has to. And and Lawrence, the main reason why, and the reason that we get these sort of excellent reports, this this piece in Vanity Fair, is because you have people in the White House who recognize, uh, and, and it's one of the things that's been sort of written about consistently. Donald Trump doesn't listen in meetings. He will not sit down and concentrate. He will not focus. The only way that people can somewhat corral his behavior is by leaking, is by getting something that ends up on the air. Because in those two or three minutes on television that Donald Trump pays attention to, maybe that will somehow corral his behavior. And it's a problem when you have a president who won't listen to his own advisors. Gabe Sherman, extraordinary reporting. Thank you, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. David K. Johnston, thank you for joining us, too. Really appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.